Okay, so this is a question that was asked in my coaching group. I was asking my coaching group, this a person in my coaching group from doingride.com, join my coaching group if you want to save so much money. All right, if you want to save thousands of dollars on your next bicycle purchase, join my coaching group. All right, thousands. You're going to save so much money. Small investment, join my coaching group. You're going to get the best advice, weight loss, spiked. You're going to save so much money. So the question in the group was, Harley, I've got $8,000 to spend. I'm in Guatemala. I think it's Guatemala. Um, and there's not much market here. Is this bike okay? And they showed me a picture of a bike, Chinese carbon bike, which is fine. $8,000 US with all tank. And I was just like, damn, mamma mia. Mama, I said, for that much money, you could fly to San Diego, to LA, LAX, you know, go for a holiday, have an incredible time, and have money left over. And a, and, a, and a better bike. All right, so I'm going to show you what you can get for about $1,000 USD. This one's listed for 2.8. There's no way it's going to sell for 2.3. All right, so it's been listed for two weeks. It's an S-Works frame. You know, they're all they're all good. It's all, these, all these specialized rim brake bikes are good back in the day. The only thing you want to watch out for is cracked forks. Cracked forks, ring of death. All right, that's two big things on any fork, all right, especially carbon fiber steerer. Okay, so that's just a given. Um... You know, so this is 2.3, it's a 54, 52, it looks to be okay condition, but we don't know how, how good, what the fork condition is, all right? We don't know, we need, to, we need to know the fork condition. Oh, the fork's fine. It had a service regular. No, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. How do we know the fork's not broken? We don't know that. I bought a bike recently off a guy, super nice guy, legit guy, all right, and the fork had been replaced because it had a ring of death. And I said, oh, yeah, I'm assuming the fork, I just replaced the fork, the fork would be fine. The fork was cracked. He didn't know that. You know, he wasn't trying to do a dodge. But I said, look, I'll, I'll, I'll buy the bike with the with the assumption, the strong assumption, the fork is damaged and I have to replace it. He said, oh, the fork will be fine. I said, that's okay. But, you know, and he gave me a killer deal. He gave me $1,500 of market value, $1,500 Australian, which is, what's that, 1,200 USD, 1,100 USD, DI2 Super 6 with a spare rear wheel, just, you know, a, a pretty fair price. No one else wanted it, you know, for two and a half Aussie. So had a mismatch fork, etc. But I, I was happy to, you know, happy with that. It's fine with that. He was, he was happy with the price. I was happy with the price. It was a win-win. But he, yeah, legit guy, and he thought the fork would be fine. The fork wasn't fine. The fork was ready to fail. So it's a good thing he sold with the bike, not not someone else who wasn't as mechanically minded as I am, or it's good that he sold it and didn't keep riding it because the fork, I guarantee you, would have eventually caused a catastrophic failure because it hadn't been used. Someone hadn't used a torque wrench and they used a Cannondale stock plug, which is inferior. Anyways, that's another topic. I'm just saying, you always have to check that carbon fork or a steel fork. All oh, right, steel, steel's real. It doesn't break. Steel breaks, man. I've seen catastrophic failures: steel handlebars, alloy handlebars, carbon bars, forks, etc. Everything can fail. You've got to check your equipment. This is a nice bike. Um, good condition. The shifters don't have much crashes in there. The hoods look tight and right. Um, not much scratching in the bottom bracket area. You know, down here looks pretty clean. Not much chain slap going on there. You know, so two, three. I mean, even for two, three, it's a fair price. Yeah. It's a lot better than our friend who's going to pay eight thousand dollars. So again, we're in with we're, we're five thousand seven hundred dollars in our pocket. How much does an air ticket cost to Guatemala, etc.? You know, that's what I'd be doing. I'd be going for a holiday. Um, right, so that's one. But you get this much cheaper than two, three. This isn't going to sell for two, three. If it was, it would have sold two over two weeks ago. I've got another Cannondale over here, Super 6, 1200 bucks. This is not the high mod version, but this frame, I had one of these legit bike, legit, very, very legit Cannondale, um, super stiff frame. This is like a legit, this is one of the best stiff, if you're like a heavier rider, you know, you're 100 kilos, you're on a lot of steroids, full natty bra, this would be a good bike for you. All right, this is this bike is designed for heavy Clyde style riders, super stiff, one of the stiffest frames ever made, ever made. Much stiffer than my SL7 Tarmac S Works, which I currently own. And that's what I love about owning and riding so many bikes. I can say with personal experience, this 2012 uh, Cannondale non Evo is a really, really stiff bike. Stiffer than the Evo for sure, which I currently also own. So that's 1200 bucks. Looks been very, very good condition. Again, we're going to check out that fork. We're going to strip and rip that fork. But again, it's an inch and a half fork. Pretty easy to get it replaced on that one. 
Um, another tarmac over here, SL4, another favorite bike of mine. Again, with the specialized bikes, they do all have, all these tarmacs from the SL2 onwards have a proprietary fork, meaning you need to fit it with another specialized fork. It's an inch and, it's an inch and a half stereodometer, but it's got a recessed lower bearing. So it really throws a spanner in the S-works there. So if you do have issues with the ring of death or cracked steerer, you're locked into that specialized fork. But again, if you're in California, you're going to find a lot of specialized dealer might have a, a near new fork laying around in mint condition. It's only 50 bucks. 50 bucks is a going rate for a fork. Because um, not many people want to ride a mismatched fork and paint. I don't care. But a lot of people are like, oh, it's got a mismatched fork on it. So it's got a mismatched fork. Price drops a lot. This is this is 17 weeks ago. This definitely would sell for 1,000 USD. Even for 2,000 USD, it's a very incredible bike. This is... I would prefer this bike than the SL7 S-Works Tarmac that I currently own. If I could do a swap, I mean, obviously my market value for my SL7 is a lot higher, but let's hypothetical say, hey, Harley, you can't sell the bikes. You can only ride them. Which do you want? Do you want this SL4 with Tram Force or do you want the latest SL7 with the, D the Durace DI2, which I currently have? I'm going to say, please give me this rim brake SL4. No doubt. No doubt about it. This is much lighter. This would be close to seven kilos, close to seven kg. Offer this person a thousand bucks, build up the conversation, establish the rapport, don't come across like a douche like me, um, you know, and just, you, you'll you get this bike for a thousand bucks, man. You'll get, and say, how do I know the fork's not damaged, blah, blah, blah. Just don't come across douchey, right? People would rather lose a sale than deal with a douche like me. So just keep that in mind, leave the doucheness at home, just be super polite, establish rapport, nicey, nicey. Most road cyclists have very thin skins, so don't push it too much. This is a Scatante, um, which is, a, again, Chinese brand bike, um, which the SL, all the S-Works come out of China, Brianchis, etc., Cervelo, China, Cannondale, China. This is in mint condition. This is the old 7900 Durace 10 speed. It's a no-name brand, but I'll tell you what, this frame, I've ridden one of these before, this exact model, and it, it, it's legit. It's legit, um, you know doesn't have much uh, market value on it because of the brand but these are legit this bike is in mint condition those tectro brakes i had somewhere in a cervello back in the day that they're pretty average brakes um that sandal was pretty popular for some people you know those bars look like they have been used but again carbon bit if and, but they're not too bad they're sort of ergonomic but again i would strip them back and much as in no cracks when i say strip back i don't mean like pull the paint off i mean take the tap the bar and uh, the levers off this just take them apart and check for any cracks. And when, by, by taking it apart, I don't mean cut them in half with a hacksaw and glue them back together. I mean, take them off the bike and just give them a full inspection for any cracks and voids, etc. like that. Um, crimpings, the, this bike's mint condition. There's hardly any scratches on the derailleur, stock derailleur, stock cranks, hardly anywhere on the chain rings. I've actually used these chain rings before. This, yeah, this bike is a steel, it's dusty. You're gonna, it's, this is a month ago, 1100 bucks for a Durace bike. With nice wheels and a lock that's going to be cut through in five seconds with an angle grinder. This is a great bike. All right, this is a great bike. The shape of those bars, not much of a. I mean, bars is personal preference. I would, I would buy this bike. Obviously, too small for me, but this is, this is a good deal. You're going to get it cheap. You probably get this. For, you could get this for maybe five hundred dollars, man. This guy has a medical reason. He doesn't sell. He's got a new, nice new car in there. This bike hasn't been ridden, man. All right, this bike's ten years old. It's hardly been ridden. Right, you know, like you're gonna get maybe five, six hundred USD. This is a nice bike. Would I rather this bike than my SL7 Tarmac S Works? One hundred percent. I prefer the SL4 Tarmac. We just saw the SRAM Force, but I'd definitely swap my SL7 S Works for this one. That's an indicator of how much this bike is much much better you know and i'm a man of my word when it comes to bike tech and nutrition and weight loss i'm only going to tell you the absolute truth when it comes to this all right it's yeah this is legit this brakes a bit if you if you find the brakes a bit underwhelming just put a shimano 105 on the front you'll be good to go here we've got another bike over here 1850 listed 18 weeks ago dreaming price fantastic bike though beautiful bike sl3 mm. Look at that US edition colorway. Beautiful. Hardly any buffing on the cranks there. The Fusey Ravar wheels, DT Swiss internals, pretty strong, robust wheel, not too bad. Rolling resistance, SRAM red, crisp looking railer. 
crisp looking chain rings, low mileage this person's for I'm gonna ride for a bit, I'm gonna get super fit, nah it's too hard. My legs burn this low carb diet, it's got no energy, and the bikes has been shelved. Original stock, seat post there. Um, it's like a giant saddle, stock stem, flip the bars, had a prostate poundage air. So you just this bike is gonna be a ripper to ride. This is a nice, nice bike. Again, proprietary fork. We're gonna have to check for ring of death or crack steerer, but this is a nice bike. What's it gonna go for? I mean, again, would I swap it for my SL7 S Works? 100%. I would ride this SL3 any day. I would do a straight swap, straight with, without a question. I would feel guilty for giving my SL7, not trolling here, to this person. I would feel guilty to swap this bike over. I'd feel no, Dash looking. Dash is giving me, giving me the evil eye. She, uh, you know, this is this is legit. All right, these bikes are legit. Specialized made some sold some great bikes. Specialized they make bikes, they sell them. Specialized resellers of Chinese carbon frames, just like I am. And this was a killer model. The SL1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 rim brakes, Tarmax was the real deal. This new SL7 sloppy, flexy, rowing rotors, da da da. The World Tour riders hate them, but I got no choice. Um, be able to definitely swap my SL7 for this one. All right, so this is a nice bike. 1850, it's worth it, but ain't gonna get, they ain't gonna sell for 1850. 8, 850, 8 off from 850 go even down more just say hey brother give you 580 today blah 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 or just have a bit of a, a chummy talk with them you know external cables this bike man you could flip strip and rip this bike in half an hour you know like this bikes are so easy to work on so easy to work and here we are over here we've got a bit more upmarket price much here we've got a 2000 and blah, 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 12 cannondale it's di2 only it looks like again it's gonna lower the value of it Looks to be in very, very good condition. This is a fibratory over. This has been polished and waxed and stripped and crypt. Um, you know, heavy wheels on there. Mavic Serum Elites. Looks like it's got 10 speed cassettes on it with the 11 speed derailleur. How's that working? Looks like it is working. Very good condition. Looks to be. Again, we've got to, we want to drop out the fork. We want to check for the crack steerer or the ring of death. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Speed set. What was the 68, 70 year derail? That's interesting. Got the uh, 10 speed shifters there. What's going on here? What's going on here? This is interesting. I'm assuming that these, this cassette is working with this derailleur. It could, might, it might not. Either way, uh, let's look at the different market value of this bike. Assuming, see, look at that. They've got the, they're taking the photo and the chain is off the big ring. So this person may, be flipping and ripping cycles then you know it's a bit of an issue it's not a stock um build actually is it actually i'll take that back it is a stock build but why has it got a 10 speaker set on the back anyway this what, what's the uh what's the work value of this bike two four I ain't gonna sell for two four is it a nice bike is this better than the latest sl uh, the super six to 100 disc brake 100 this is better this is lighter and faster and more racy feeling. Put some lighter wheels in it, even be better. Um, so yeah, this, uh, you know, two, four, off from a grand. This will sell for about a grand. It's got scratches in the shifter. You know, the, the shifters look like they've done a bit of wear and tear, you know. Got a bit of wear and tear there. The, the hoods are starting to get a bit flappy-dappy. Still gonna be fine though. I'll still ride these hoods, but you can tell, yeah, maybe it was a heavy rider who had them and sweat a lot, a lot of the keto sweat on there, sort of eroded the hoods a bit. Maybe, maybe not. Um, but yeah, very nice bike, 54. I've got one of these. Um, they're very, very light. Um, you know, but yeah, the chain rings, the, it's put in the big ring, but the chain's gone onto the little ring, sort of. So it's interesting, maybe a bit of a keto movement, keto moment there. Um, but yeah, nice bike, Grant, off from a Grant. Anyway, that's the wrap of this video. Just wanted to prove a point for a thousand USD. You can get a better bike than the current SL7 Tarmac. You can get a lighter bike than most of the world tourist riders are riding now in the 2021 Tour de France. For a thousand dollars USD. All right. Join my coaching group, DuneRod.com. I'll coach you through every step of the bargain, of the deal, of the hunt. You can tell me, hey, DuneRod, what do you think of this bike? Is it any good? What are the laws to look for? I will get you the best bike out there. We'll work together. All right. 
we worked together. This is killer deals. Look at all these. And this this took me ten minutes or even less to just click click open tab open tab. I didn't even do a deep dive. I didn't go to Craigslist. I didn't go to Gumtree or eBay or FleaBay or you know Skid Row or whatever. Don't recommend buying stolen bikes, obviously. But you know, like you know, it's you just deals are there. Let me help you save you time, money, and cycle enjoyment. Uh, I just feel for people walking to a bike shop today and spending big bucks on one of these clunky extra maintenance road disc bike bikes. I mean, I love my disc and my gravel bike. Don't get me wrong. Love on the gravel. But for road, it's like I'm running 25 more tires. You know, I'm running a high performance product. I don't want to have disc brakes to control a 25 mil or a 23 mil tire. My gravel bike, for sure. Loving the discs. But, you know, road disc, no thanks, not for me. But anyway, that's the deal. So there's rim brake bikes out there. Killer deals, man. Why would you spend more than a thousand dollars USD? Why? Why would you spend more than a thousand dollars USD for an insanely good bike, a bike that's better than the current Tour de France level bikes out there now today? Literally, why would you spend more than a thousand? Okay, fifteen hundred USD. That's the max you have to spend if you're willing to ride secondhand, maybe a little bit old, but it's better tech than today, one hundred percent. 